the top 10 and bottom airlines in the USA compared and contrasted the good and the bad, the great and the awful. In this video, I'll rank and talk about which ones are great and which ones are bad, just focused on airlines in the USA, and there will probably be some mediocre ones there in the middle. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions, I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. This is a live stream that I do on Monday nights. If you're on the live stream, definitely let me know what you think about these airlines. I'm really curious as to what your experiences are on the good, the mediocre, and the awful. And if you're watching the archive, well thanks for joining in. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell to turn on notifications so you'll be notified notified of future live streams on future Monday nights. So let me first start with my inspiration about why I put this video together. Well, I was looking at uh, this like Skytrax ranking. There's this company called Skytrax, S-K-Y-T-R-A-X, and they publish uh, this thing where they rank the world's airlines. And I was reading an article where they were awarding their top five star rating to 11 airlines. And are you curious how many airlines from the U.S. received the Skytrax coveted five-star award? Zero. Zero airlines from the U.S. received the five-star award. Okay, so then I went to look at the top 100 list that Skytrax publishes, and do you know where the first U.S. airline is on that list of 100? Yes, the first airline on that list at 100 is... Um... Buh, buh, buh. Delta Airlines, which comes in at number 37 on their top 100 list. So, top 100 of the world, 37th comes in Delta. So, that means on this list of the best airlines in the USA, Delta is number one. If you're not familiar with Delta, well, let's see, there's a... I'm trying to figure out my finger here. Right there, that's what Delta looks like. You've probably all seen what Delta looks like, but Delta, it is the world's second largest airline. It's headquartered in Atlanta. Delta has 889 planes. They fly 5,400 flights daily. They serve an extensive domestic and international network that includes over 300 destinations in 52 countries. It's a pretty big airline. It's part of this airline alliance called SkyTeam. There's three big alliances, and we'll go through those as we're talking through this. Uh, and you know, what I think about Delta, Delta is a great airline. They have good planes. They have good on-time performance but they have a lousy rewards program. Their program, it's known as Sky Miles, and in the frequent flyer community, people often refer to Sky Miles as Sky Pesos. Why Sky Pesos? Because it's really uh, not worth a lot to redeem those miles for much of anything. Um, so, you know, I like to fly Delta when they go where I want to, and I'm not terribly concerned about um, I'm not terribly concerned about whether uh, I'm actually getting rewards or not. By the way, I'm, I'm curious, since I'm doing this as a live stream and I'm doing it as a new high resolution, are people still seeing the stream or did the stream decide to stop on me? Well, I'm curious to what you have to say in the chat because this chat still looks like it's connected but my stream for some reason looks like it says it is waiting for me to come back. And you know what? That's never good when it's this. Uh, some people said there's a lot of buffering. My stream, go ahead and stop the Facebook stream just for fun. And hopefully this stream comes back online. I'm definitely killing a little time talking here. Uh, people say they can see me. They're still watching. So hopefully this goes on. Um, and it should come back here in a moment. So I'm hoping this is the great part about doing live stream. It says now it's spinning. Now it's buffering. Well, I hope it's come back and you all can see me. This is uh, going to be great. All right. So on to number two. The second best airline uh, in the U.S. is Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines. 
Where did they fall out on the top 100 list? They fell out at number 38. Uh, Alaska Airlines, if you're not that familiar, is headquartered in SeaTac, Washington, which is just right outside of Seattle, uh, just right outside of that metropolitan area. Alaska Airlines is the fifth largest airline in the United States. Um, they recently merged with Virgin America, so Alaska merged with Virgin, and they're going to go forward as Alaska, basically killing off that Virgin America name. Alaska Airlines is very strong on the West Coast. Seattle, Portland, San Jose, San Diego, they are a much smaller airline than Delta Airlines is. They have 332 planes, 116 destinations, 1,200 daily flights. That's about a fifth of what Delta flies. And internationally, they go to Mexico, Canada, Costa Rica, and Cuba. Alaska Airlines is not a member of any airline alliance, but they do have code share agreements with 17 other airlines, which makes Alaska Airlines really great as a mileage bank, speaking of a rewards program, because you can book flights on these other partners like American Airlines or Emirates, and if you don't have a lot of miles in those programs, you can credit your miles to Alaska. Um, so I'm glad to see people say that I'm back now, uh, so I'm going to go to a few comments uh, before we continue on. Um, SoCal Seth says, I only fly American because uh, the airport is my hub. It's an easy status earner. We'll get to American Airlines in a little bit. Um, Tanner Wilson says, how can we push to get European and East Asia? Asian airlines flying domestically. You mean, how do we get them to fly routes within the United States? Yeah, that's going to be really hard. Most countries have laws against um, other airlines flying routes within their countries. You'll find some airlines do that within the U.S., and they call them these things like fifth freedom routes. There'll be things like um, say Singapore Airlines might fly Singapore to New York to Los Angeles, something like that, though that route wouldn't terribly make sense. But they'll do it essentially to be like a connection from someplace because they need to get fuel in another airport to then fly to where they're going. But that's why you don't see many um, other right non-US airlines flying those routes domestically. But it would be good to give some of our uh, lousy US airlines... Um, a run for their money. Uh, unbearable lightness of being asked, does anyone know the best airline for traveling with a wedding dress? Wow, that is a great question. And I, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. But if anybody else does, uh, please let unbearable lightness of being know in the chat. Um, let's see. So, uh, SoCal Seth says, if only they could put an In-N-Out burger on the plane, that would be really good. Speaking of burgers, uh, when we get to United, you know, one of the things I like about United, actually Continental, when it was Continental Airlines, Continental served um, hamburgers on the plane. It was a typical meal in first class. It was something you could typically buy in economy. And actually, I found the Continental hamburgers to be quite good. Um, Brandon Torres says, Alaska doesn't even fly to Alaska. Uh, they do fly to Alaska, but it's just not a big hub for them anymore. Alaska used to be a really big hub in the world because flights to Europe and Russia and things like that would stop in Alaska to refuel. Alaska is no longer really a big passenger hub, and so Alaska does a lot of business out of um, that, uh, you know, the western seaboard. Uh, and to Hawaii, right? If you watched my video about Southwest Airlines, I definitely talked about them as well. Uh, Southwest is definitely competing with Alaska and Hawaiian for those flights. Um, Nathan asked, what about Qantas? Um, I have never flown Qantas, though I've heard really good things about Qantas. It's great if you want to go to Australia. Not great if you want to go that many other places. Eric97 said he just bought a Topher mug. Send me a picture, Eric. I would love to see it. All right, let's go on to number three. The third best airline in the U.S. is JetBlue Airways. This is another kind of small boutique-ish airline. Call it that. On top 100 list that Skytrax published, they came in at number 42. JetBlue Airways, they can, they're considered to be a low-cost airline. They're headquartered in New York City, 
Of the major airlines in the U.S., they are the seventh largest. Their main base is at John F. Kennedy International Airport that goes by the code JFK. Um, like Alaska, they are not part of an alliance, though they have code share agreements with 21 other airlines. They're focused on New York, Boston, Florida, in particular Orlando and Fort Lauderdale, Long Beach, which is a smaller airport around Los Angeles, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. I think JetBlue really got started flying a lot of people from the colder climates of New York and Boston down to the warmer climates in Florida or down to LA and Los Long Beach or in Puerto Rico. And Nelson Lake uh, says JetBlue is great to Puerto Rico. Nelson, I assume you have flown them there. I'm glad to hear uh, you liked them. JetBlue, again, being a smaller airline, has 253 planes. They fly to just about 100 destinations and they fly to 925 daily flights. So uh, they are a little smaller than Alaska Airlines. Um, when I've flown JetBlue before, I kind of like that they took sort of just kind of like a fresh approach to the airline. Um, the planes and the service and the people who work there just feel a lot more fresh. A lot of the big legacy carriers have a tendency to feel feel tired, the planes feel tired, the staff feel tired. Uh, Vic Lau asks a question and says, what about Spirit? Best rates in the world. Vic, we are going to get to Spirit. It is on this list. And Deepak asks, what about United? Yeah, we're going to get to United on this list. Uh, and I won't give it away what the number is, but it's a little better than eight. So that's good. Uh, D-F-H-Y-A-K, which I'm not sure I can pronounce this name, says JetBlue has always had a good name. Uh, Rainy Stoner says, just jumped on. I missed the first part of this. Well, welcome, Rainy. Uh, you missed a little bit of stuttering in the live stream where I was working on the encoding rate. I'm sending this out at a little higher resolution than typically, so working out some of the kinks on this. It's now at 1080p, so hopefully the resolution looks a little bit better for you all. Uh, SoCal Seth says, we need a private jet. Uh, get 10 million subscribers already. Yeah, if I get 10 million subscribers, I'm totally chartering a private jet someplace. That would be fun. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and look at number four. The fourth uh, best airline in the U.S. is Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines on the Skytrax Top 100 came in at number 57. Uh, Southwest Airlines was he is headquartered in Dallas, Texas. Southwest Airlines is the world's largest low-cost carrier. Not just the U.S.'s largest low-cost carrier, but the world's largest low-cost carrier. Southwest is the fourth largest carrier in the world based on fleet size, based on the number of planes they have. And Southwest carries the most passengers domestically in the United States of any United States airline. Yes, they carry more domestic passengers than American, Delta, or United. Even though those airlines are bigger, Southwest is sending more people back and forth from the different states. Southwest has 754 planes. They have 99 destinations. They fly 4,000 flights a day. Uh, they don't fly to many international destinations. They fly to 14 international destinations, mostly in Mexico and Central America. And Southwest as an airline, I like Southwest and I don't like Southwest. I like Southwest for short flights. I love it to go up to San Jose. I love it to go to Las Vegas. I like things that I'm not gonna be on the plane for that long, and I don't really care where I'm going to sit. Southwest also has really great policies that um, there's never any change fees. Tickets are always refundable for credit. You can just apply that credit to any future flight. Uh, and I find that Southwest flight attendants and staff are just generally pretty happy. They're like happy people. I think maybe because they can wear like shorts and things like that, they have a pretty relaxed attitude. I usually find Southwest, they make fun announcements when you get on the plane. Like they just enjoy their job in comparison to a lot of airlines where they seem to 
hate their job, the people who work there. Um, another great thing about Southwest, some people consider this great, some people don't consider it great, uh, but Southwest has this open seating policy, which the good part about it is they don't charge more for seats, right? Like I really hate when we're gonna get into some of the airlines that are further down, these other discount carriers that charge money for seats, they charge money for everything. Southwest has a very transparent pricing policy. And so when you actually buy a flight on Southwest for $49, it's actually $49 and they're not trying to nickel and dime you to death on your flight. Um, so, uh, Jason Nuka says, uh, Spirit Airlines is yellow. It is. I'll talk about that when I get to Spirit. Daniel asks, when can we see Topher in 4K? You know what? All my recorded videos that I upload to YouTube, they are all in 4K. 4K live streaming really hard. Mark Torres says, yay, Southwest. Mark, I take it you like Southwest. Uh, Damien says, uh, Air New Zealand is a great airline and looking to fly to JFK in the near future. Um, SoCal Seth says, Southwest is the city bus of the sky. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe Southwest, right? It does kind of feel like that. And again, if you're not going to be on it for a long time, it's totally fine, right? Um, and Tanner agrees, for Southwest Airlines, it's not bad for what you get. Um, Brandon says, it is only going to get lower from here on the U.S. airlines. Lower, I assume you mean in service. One of the things that uh, I make a joke of, and I, maybe I'll make this joke now, but there's the, really the low-cost carriers, we'll get to these in a little bit, but people like Spirit Airlines, I feel like they're, like, yeah, they have the cheapest prices, but the cheapest service. And I think a lot of people would be like, hey, it, can I get $5 off if you kick me in the teeth? I mean, it's like the service just gets so bad on some carriers. Uh, Stefan Clark says, awesome YouTube video. Thanks, Stefan. I appreciate it. Um, Uh-oh says, uh, problem with Southwest is they fly every, every plane full of people. And you never get an empty middle seat for relaxing. That is true. And I think that's one of the ways that um, they make their money, right? Is that like if a plane's not full, well, then they get the fare sales and the fares get really cheap. Like I was looking to go to Vegas coming up in April. And when I looked originally, the flights were maybe $150 each way, but I guess people weren't booking the flight. So they had a fare sale and they lowered them to $49 so they could sell seats on the flight. So I'm sure it'll be full, but hey, for $49 each way from Southern California to Vegas, that is a pretty good deal. Uh, Dorit says, I still cannot stand the non-assigned seating on Southwest. Yeah, it is kind of a pain, but you know, if you learn the ropes of Southwest, it's not that bad, right? The whole, make sure you check in exactly 24 hours before you fly. Like when I'm flying Southwest and <clears throat> I think OC girl found this funny that uh, when we were in San Jose, um, when we were in Santa Cruz making the Santa Cruz video, we were flying Southwest Airlines and our flight the next day was at 3 p.m. and we were like in this redwood forest. And I was like, we need to get out of the forest and we need to get to cell phone service because I need to be right there so that I can check in so that I can get my A boarding pass because I'm not sitting in the back. I'm not sitting by the bathroom. I wanna get my stuff in the overhead bin. And if you do that, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Babe Slot says Southwest had the controversial 737 MAX 8. Yeah, if you guys have been following the news, um, the 737 MAX 8, that's the one that seems to crash all the time. Mm. One just crashed in, um, what, Ethiopia? Ethiopian Airways? I mean, it's really sad. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens with Boeing uh, and what they find out about those planes. Uh, 808 Hayes like Southwest because he says... Uh, it's great that Hawaiian Airlines uh, finally has competition in the Hawaiian Islands, and I agree it is. Uh, and if you haven't watched it, I just put out this video last weekend um, about uh, Ho uh, Southwest flying to Hawaii. They have just started selling fares. Um, so if you want to go to Hawaii, just like James here says, you can now buy tickets. Uh, Coca-Cola Bear asks if I've done Hawaiian Airlines yet. Uh, no, not yet. Just a recap for people who are new to the live stream. Delta Airlines is number one. Alaska Airlines is number two. JetBlue Airways is number three. We're currently, I need to put my fingers down here, and Southwest is number four. So let's go ahead and move on to number five. The fifth best carrier in the U.S. is American Airlines, the namesake of America with the American flags right there. American Airlines on the Skytrax Top 100 came in at 71. 
American Airlines is the world's largest airline. The largest airline in the world and in the US. Uh, American Airlines is headquartered also in Texas. They are in Fort Worth, Texas. If you are following Southwest, Southwest is in Dallas. American Airlines is in Fort Worth. If you've flown through American Airlines major hub, it's DFW Dallas Fort Worth Airport. And if you fly through Dallas Fort Worth Airport, I'm convinced that airport is like 95% American Airlines. I mean, it's American Airlines everywhere. Southwest won't even fly through DFW. I mean, they have a couple flights, but Southwest flies out of this other airport called Love Field. It seems like most flights on American Airlines take you through Dallas Fort Worth. American Airlines has 962 planes. They fly 6,700 flights every day to over 350 destinations in more than 50 countries. American Airlines is part of the One World Alliance. Uh, the One World Alliance um, is a good airline alliance. It's better than SkyTeam, which I talked about. The problem with Delta is their rewards program is really lame. People often call it Sky Pesos. American Airlines has a much better rewards program. Um, but what I find the drag about their rewards program is, particularly if you're going to Europe, that the American Airlines major partner in one world to go to Europe is British Airways. And British Airways Airways charges very high fuel, sur fuel surcharges, particularly if you're looking to buy business class tickets. Uh, so that's uh, that's why I don't love American all that much. Uh, but they are eh, they're half they're half number five on this list of ten. So Cal Seth says shout out to OC girl Topher and Barry. Thank you, Seth. Um, Yippie says non-assigned seating is not good for tall passengers. I need my aisle seat. Yeah, that's a good point. One of the nice things about American Airlines, if you get like good status in their elite program, they have what they call like the main cabin extra seats, which are seats uh, that have extra leg room, not just the emergency exits, but other seats in the cabin. So those are pretty nice. Um... Nelson Luke says the USA will never be on par with Asia when it comes to flying or rail. Um, I mean, they aren't so far. I'm keeping hope alive that we can be, just not a lot of hope alive. Dorit says he's dying to try Singapore Airlines. Maybe one day Singapore Airlines is amazing. You should definitely fly it. Um, Alonzo about Southwest says he always makes sure to check in 24 hours exactly. Uh, Alonzo uh, says he loves American Airlines since he works for them. Very cool, Alonzo. What do you do for American? Um, and Tanner says they did make some improvements to Dallas Love Field Airport in recent years. And actually, Dallas Fort Worth, they've like done a pretty huge remodel on that airport too. Um, there used to be this like Italian place that I love to eat at in DFW. It was called like East Side Mario's. They had really good lasagna. And unfortunately, they're not there anymore. I'm so sad. Um, I used to go through Dallas-Fort Worth quite a bit. And I used to fly American Airlines quite a bit, too, uh, until eventually I um, I switched to United. And the reason why, SoCal Seth says DFW is the ISIS of airports. I'll never use that as a hub again. And the reason why I stopped flying American Airlines is... I would always have to connect through Dallas, and it seemed like I would always end up through there in a thunderstorm. My flight would get in late. I would miss my connection. All the other connections would be full, and I just ended up spending way too many nights in Dallas than I actually really wanted to. Um, Dave Souza says, uh, when I fly American, I feel like the seats are about 50 years old and about to fall apart. Yeah, it depends on the plane. If you're on their MD-80s, which I don't think they fly anymore, those did feel that way. Um, Lanakai says, you and OC Girl are an inspiration to travel. Thank you, uh, Lanakai. I appreciate it. Um... Scott McCarthy says, uh, hey, Chris, check out any airline's track record through the Better Business Bureau. Just search any business or airline with the BBB. Since I work for the BBB, customer reviews mean a lot to consumers. Absolutely, Scott. That's a great tip. Uh, and actually, um, Skytrax, they do ratings for all these different airlines, too. Uh, and there are things that, like... I've got written down here that I'm, I'm not reading for all of them because I didn't want to bore you for the readings for those um, for the ratings for each one of them. But like American Airlines, like for every airline, they've asked people to rate them in five different areas: food, entertainment, seats, service, and value. 
Uh, and so if you're curious where we are in this ranking list, on a scale of one to five, American Airlines got an average of two in all those areas. And if we compare it to Delta, Delta got an average of three in those areas. Um, so three is the highest that an American airline got. Um, JetBlue did get a four in service, so that's pretty good. Um, but uh, I don't think any US-based airlines received more than a four in any one of these areas. So I guess that's what people say uh, about a lot of American airlines. Um, Let's see. Uh-oh says, I remember reading that Delta has the oldest fleet by average age, so avoid them. Yeah, I think if the airlines kind of trade who has the oldest. Um, Allegiant definitely had the oldest for a while. And uh, TNG Wong says, uh, they just came back from Kauai and Maui and enjoyed the videos. Uh, and uh, Tanji says, American Airlines... Thumbs down, JetBlue number one. Thank you, Tanji, and I'm glad you enjoyed Hawaii. Daisy Creek says, <clears throat> I hate planes. Daisy, how do you travel if you hate planes? Bobby says, uh, yeah, he got stuck in Dallas too, so I am apparently not the only one. And Nelson says, American Airlines has very near retirement flight attendants. I think the big legacy carriers in the U.S. all sort of have that problem. Uh... James says, if you're going through Dallas, do not schedule a flight of less, a layover of less than two hours. That is a pretty good tip. And Daisy says, I really don't like airplanes when everybody's coughing and sneezing next to me. I don't like that either. Ryan Lott says, fantastic work putting this together. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. And Alonzo confirmed that, yes, all the MD-80s are retired now for American Airlines. That was the really old planes, but uh-oh, like them, they were a 3-2 configuration. So they had like three seats on one side and two seats on the other side. Um, Dream K says, how about Alaska Air? Uh, Alaska Air uh, was number two on this list. They did pretty good. Um, Ryan Lott says, have you heard of skip lagging? You, yes, Ryan, I have heard of skip lagging. A video that I plan to do, I've written it all up, I just haven't recorded it yet, is um, how to get good deals on flights. Uh, and skip lagging is something I'm going to talk about in uh, that video. But um, for those of you who sort of aren't familiar, like a skip lag flight ends up being a one where you you basically book a route at the end that you're not gonna fly but because you book this other route it ends up not charging you the fuel surcharges and it's really frankly super complicated um all right so let's go on to number six the sixth best airline in the u.s is hawaiian airlines aloha to hawaiian airlines hawaiian airlines on the skytrax top 100 list was number 77 hawaiian airlines is the flag carrier of the state of hawaii uh, they are headquartered in honolulu hawaii on the island of oahu Hawaiian Airlines is kind of unique as an American carrier because they are focused on flights to, from, and around Hawaii. Um, from the state of Hawaii to the mainland, uh, they fly to 12 U.S. gateway cities, including Las Vegas, Long Beach, Los Angeles, New York City, Oakland, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, and Seattle. So that's where they fly in the mainland U.S. They fly to nine international destinations, a couple in Australia, Auckland, uh, Brisbane, and Sydney. Uh, they fly to a couple of destinations in Japan, which you would imagine because Hawaii is huge for Japanese tourists. Uh, they have flights to Osaka, uh, Sapporo, and Tokyo, and they also fly to um, Seoul, South Korea, uh, and American Samoa and French Polynesia. So those are the international destinations the Hawaiian Airlines flies to bring visitors to Hawaii. That's, that's those routes. Hawaiian Airlines has 56 planes. They have 26 destinations. You'll notice that is very small, 56 planes, as compared to American Airlines with 962 planes. Hawaiian Airlines has 26 destinations. American Airlines flies to 350 destinations. Hawaiian Airlines flies 250 daily flights total, system-wide. And of those 250 daily flights, 160 of them are within Hawaii. So most of Hawaiian Airlines flights 
are within the islands of Hawaii. One of the great things though about Hawaiian Airlines, they frequently top the list of on-time carriers for the United States, so they're known for having a really great on-time service, as well as the fewest cancellations over sales and baggage handling issues. Um, and uh, so, uh, Let's go to the comments and say what people say about Hawaiian Airlines, what you all say. Coca-Cola Bear says Hawaiian Airlines is great. Dorit says, I've heard Hawaiian Airlines is awesome. UEL Kingpin says, Hawaiian food quality has gone down recently. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines ran Aloha Airlines out of business. Aloha Airlines was another carrier in the Hawaiian Airlines. Now Hawaiian Airlines is the only carrier in the Hawaiian Islands. Um, the one thing I don't like about Hawaiian Airlines, I don't like the baggage fees. They charge baggage fees like on every flight, even the inner island flights in Hawaii. And it particularly annoys me if you end up with a code share flight on Hawaiian Airlines. This happened to me once where I was flying United to Hawaii. Um, but then coming back, the first leg I had, we were in Kauai. And we had a Hawaiian Airlines flight from Kauai to Honolulu in Oahu and then it was United back to San Francisco. And it was a code, like I booked it with United, but because the first leg was a Hawaiian Airlines flight, they charged fees to check in my bags. Where well, I'm an elite member on United, so theoretically my bags should have been free, three free bags. But because Hawaiian Airlines was the first carrier, they got to charge the baggage fees, which I thought was pretty lame since Hawaiian Airlines was flying me all of 20 minutes from Kauai to Oahu, and then United was flying me six hours across the Pacific. So if anybody should have got the checked-in baggage fares, it should have been um, United, but I thought that was just pretty lame. Um, the Professional 64 joined in and says, hello from Florida, and uh, holy love your videos. Awesome, thank you, Professional 64. Um, Johnny Bangkok says, uh, Sadi Krap Kun, Chris from Bangkok. I probably pronounced that wrong, but Johnny, thanks for joining in from Bangkok. Nelson says, I miss Thai Airlines from LAX. Thai Airlines is pretty awesome. And Cam says, Aloha, since we're talking about Hawaiian Airlines. Steven asks, how much Hawaiian Airlines charges for each bag? I felt like they charged a fortune. I felt like my two bags was like $70 or something, which I, I felt was outrageous. Um, Alonzo asks, if I've ever flown with Air Soul. I've flown not with Air Seoul. I've flown with another another Korean carrier. What is it? Asiana? I've flown with Asiana a number of times, but never Air Seoul. Um, Anne asks if they allow personal items. Yes, Hawaiian does allow you to bring a carry-on. Um, Bobby Stroh asks, do you get a lay when you land on Hawaii? I'm not sure if you do. Most hotels in Hawaii will give you a lay when you get to their hotels. Uh, Brian Choi says, I like charging per bag better than expensive ticket when I don't have bags. Well, Brian, you are the first person I've met that likes to pay for your bags. Albert says, awesome videos. Thanks, Albert. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, all right, so let's go on to number seven. Uh, I'm going to show you number seven as I take a drink of tea. All right. The... Seventh best airline in the U.S. is United Airlines. United Airlines, where did they end up on the Skytrax Top 100? They ended up at number 88. 88. <clears throat> United Airlines is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. United is the world's third largest airline. United operates a very large domestic and international route network with an extensive presence in the Asia Pacific region. United is a founding member of the Star Alliance um, program, which is the world's largest airline alliance with 28 member airlines. United Airlines is the carrier that I fly the most. I'm sort of sad to see it at number seven. I'm not surprised to see it at number seven, but I'm sad to see it as number seven. I think United Airlines has the best rewards program of the big three, particularly if you like to fly to Asia and you like to redeem for business class tickets. Uh, and so that's often what I like to do. Uh, we spend a lot of time going to Asia. United loves Asia, and I find that 
you know, United has this like bizarre pricing where it's cheaper to fly from Los Angeles to Singapore than it is from Los Angeles to New York City. Like LA to New York City will be $800 round trip and LA to Singapore will be $500 round trip. Uh, I also really like the economy plus seats on United Airlines because I am six feet tall. Uh, I really need that extra leg room. Uh, and so United uh, gives you that extra leg room. Now, Yippee says um, United deserves to be seventh. And I totally won't argue with you on that point. Um, you know, uh, people will say, well, the people who work for United uh, are surly. Their flight attendants are rude. I mean, they're not all rude, but they're not very nice for the most part. Like, I feel like they've often forgot about what service is. Um, somebody asked a question about Asiana Airlines, and I, I think it's gone off the page that I can click the thing on here. Um, but Asiana, it's part of Star Alliance, uh, and so I use United Miles to fly Asiana quite a bit. I've liked my experiences flying Asiana. Um, I've liked it flying most of the other Asian carriers, Japan Airlines, ANA. Um, I use my United Miles to fly ANA a lot to Japan, uh, and yes, the service on all those airlines is better. I mean... On the top 100 list, they were ranked 88, so that tells you that there's 87 airlines in the world that people like to fly better than they fly United. Um, BRP1264 says, United as a 1K is great, free food and drink and economy and pre-boarding before group one. Yeah, and so that's what I'll totally say that about United. I think United, for it to really be a good experience, you do have to have a fairly high level elite status. Um, I've got over a million miles with United. I'm a Premier Platinum, which is about their 75,000 mile a year flying status. Um, I was 1K for a number of years, but I just, I don't spend enough on tickets to be a 1K anymore. Um, but yeah, you get a lot of upgrades, the system-wide upgrades, they're fantastic. Um, Steven says the United Club is super nice. In the international clubs, you get free drinks and good food. I'll agree with you, Steven. Their international clubs are decent. I don't think their domestic clubs are. Uh, Dave Souza says if you check in early, United won't drag you off the plane. Probably. Hey, well, that's good. Um, Jason asks if I buy a separate plane ticket for Topher or does he buy his own? Yeah, um, he, he buys his own. I mean, he needs a whole seat, uh, for himself, um, you know, and, uh, he needs to bring the extra bamboo. Um, B. Rod says, United had no amenities when I flew from LAX to Kauai. You mean like in business class, like an amenity kit? Yeah, I guess they consider LAX to Kauai to be a domestic flight. So, um, they don't have the amenity kits. Um, but I do find on those flights you can ask them for things and they'll often have them. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Brandon says he can relate with the extra leg room. And Uh-Oh says, did United take the Continental logo for their tail after the merger? They absolutely did. As you can see that on the tail of this United aircraft, um, it's got that kind of globe on the back. So yes, United put that back there after the merger. Alonzo says, I prefer the emergency exit row seats. Uh, definitely. And I prefer the emergency exit row seats too. It's something like a regular seat pitch is 31 inches. Uh, the economy plus is like 36 and the exit row can be like 39. I mean, the exit row seats on United, they are like, they're impressive. I would almost rather have a aisle seat economy plus exit row on United than business uh, in a window seat. Um, Cause sometimes the business or first class seats can like recline like way back here. Uh, and the economy plus seats are really pretty good. Um, and uh, Anne says, traveled United three times, will only go business now. Felt very unloved and squished in economy. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, and I think United, they're now starting to sell um, like premium economy, which I don't think they've flown yet. They're just selling tickets. So I'll be curious to see how that looks. Uh, BRP says, the United clubs are kind of eh, but their newest Polaris lounges are some of the best in the U.S. I really like American Express Centurion lounges, um, but uh, you got to have the Amex Platinum card to get into those. Mike Dunn says, besides United, are there any other airlines that have good deals to Asia? SFO is always some of my favorite lounges. Um, 
Yeah, I think United, I mean, United has good deals, but a lot of the Asian carriers have really good deals too. So if they're part of Star Alliance, just because Star Alliance flies a lot there, I think you can check it out. Um, let's see. Um, Tom Dixon says, UA is one of the best airlines along with British Airways and Virgin, except Virgin is no longer around anymore. <laughs> Daniel asks if Topher has his own passport or do you have to smuggle him in? Yeah, I have to smuggle him in. You know, most countries have policies against uh, bringing animals in. So um, I definitely keep him uh, packed away in my backpack. And Topher Sandwich says the problem with the Centurion lounges is they're always super crowded. They are super crowded, but I'll say for me, when I go to lounges, I'm pretty much going into the lounge to eat. And then I leave. Like, I don't really hang around the lounge all that much. So as long as I can find a place to sit so I can eat, I'm usually pretty good. Music, um... Sly, F1, says United now offers premium economy in their Boeing 787. I'm curious, Music, Sly, F1, have you sat in one of their premium economy seats? Uh, I have not yet, so I'd be curious. Uh, and William Tower says premium plus is good on United. Um, and Brian says... I don't get premium economy seats don't recline. Instead, it makes you stand lean. I don't know. I really? The seats don't recline? I don't know. I think they do, but I could be wrong. All right, let's go on to number eight. The eighth best airline in the U.S. And I'm going to stop using the word best because these airlines are not in the top 100. Um, so these next three airlines really are not very good. Um, so these are the bottom three airlines. So um, <clears throat> number eight on this list, but the first bottom one that I'm going to talk about is Allegiant Airlines. Allegiant Airlines is a discount carrier headquartered in Las Vegas, Nevada. Allegiant Airlines has 64 planes and they fly to 121 destinations. Allegiant Airlines is an airline that primarily serves leisure travelers, particularly those in colder climates, going to warm weather tourist destinations such as Florida, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Phoenix. And it also serves destinations that are small destinations that the major carriers don't fly to, mostly to non-hub regional airports, and usually only a few times a week. Allegiant Airlines is kind of like Ryanair. I'm sure you've all heard of Ryanair, the low-cost carrier from Ireland. And Ryanair seeks to supplement their ticket revenue with ancillary fees. These fees include things like checking luggage, carrying on luggage, buying food and drinks, ordering advanced seat assignments, and more. Here was an interesting quote that I found by the CEO of Allegiant, Maurice Gallagher, something he said in 2009. He said, I quote, We collect $110 from you at the end of your trip. If I tried to charge you $110 up front, you wouldn't pay it. But if I sell you a 75 ticket and you self-select the rest, you will. So that's to say that they're going to sell you a $75 ticket, but they're going to charge you $110 in ancillary fees. And I think the problem with Allegiant and a lot of these airlines that are going to end up in this bottom are they're really kind of deceptive in their advertising. Um, Allegiant also has been closely monitored by the FAA due to many emergency landings and aborted takeoffs. The Tampa Bay Times, Allegiant Airlines flies a lot of flights to Tampa, um, the Tampa Bay Times said the budget carrier's planes are four times as likely to fail during flight as those operated by other major U.S. airlines. Uh, also, one of the statistics in 2015, <clears throat> in 2015, um, 42 of Allegiant's 86 planes broke down in mid-flight at least once in 2015. And among those planes that broke down, 15 were forced to land by failing engines, 9 by overheating tail compartments, and 6 by smoke or the smell of something burning. 18 times last year, and I'm not entirely sure when this article was written, but whatever year they're speaking of, key parts such as engines, sensors, and electronics failed once in flight, got checked out, and then failed again, causing another unexpected landing. So needless to say, Allegiant Airlines 
not the top of my list to fly. Um, and Michael Taylor says, Allegiant did actually give us free drinks in the airport after our flight was delayed for the third time. Well, hey, that's good. Michael, how long did your flight end up getting delayed? Uh, and uh oh asks, hey, Michael, isn't there a federal law where the airline has to feed you if you're delayed more than four hours? Um, Deshaun says, Allegiant is the best airline in the USA. I'm assuming you're being sarcastic. Uh, and um, a number of people, Stephen right here and Steve right here, have both never heard of Allegiant. Uh, and that's because, as Noopshi said, uh, Allegiant goes into small, crappy airports. So Cal Seth asks, which airline knocks and scratches? Probably these down here on this list. Uh, Vic Lau says, 60 minutes said not to fly an Allegiant. Very dangerous. Uh, and BRP, he is making a premonition of what the last two are. I won't give it away, um, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, Allegiance, uh, uh-oh, says Allegiant is the king of nickel and dime. Michael Taylor, oh, he answered before and said his, his flight was delayed five hours. And the overall experience was very sketchy. Do not do it. Um, so, yeah, thanks for the tip. And uh, uh-oh. Uh, says, uh-oh, Allegiant, run. By the way, uh-oh, I totally love that your icon is um, Stewie from The Family Guy. I'm a big Family Guy fan. Uh, and uh, Daniel Solis says, I don't believe there's federal law about that. I've been delayed more than four hours. None of them have offered any meals. Yeah, they don't have to offer you meals, but I think the law is that, like, if they keep you on the runway or the tarmac, they actually get fined at a certain perspective. Uh, and, uh, so, all right, let's go on to the next one. This is number nine on the list. Number nine on the list. Somebody mentioned this one earlier. Their planes are yellow. Spirit Airlines is an ultra low cost carrier. They're headquartered in Miramar, Florida. Spirit Airlines is famous for what they call the bear fare. Not the bear is in the animal, but bear is in, like, not wearing any clothes, right? B-A-R-E, bear fare. And they sell you a bare bones ticket. And it's all about add-ons, including seat assignments, bags, and extra leg room will cost you. Spirit Airlines, they're a bit bigger than Allegiant. They have 133 planes. They fly to 73 destinations, and they fly 600 daily flights. As I mentioned, the best part about them are definitely their yellow planes. I, when I see spirit planes at airports, I take pictures of them because I like the color on the outside. Um, but uh, if you want to bring a carry-on bag on Spirit Airlines, that'll be $45. If you want to check a bag, that'll be $50. Do you want to select a seat? They're going to charge you between $1 and $50, depending upon the seat. Do you want to pay for any of these things on the airport instead of online? That's going to cost you more. Do you want to print a boarding pass at the airport? That'll be $10, because you didn't print it at home. They really like their extra fees. Um, in 2013 and 2015, the U.S. Department of Transportation received more passenger complaints about Spirit than any other airline. The rate of complaints was dramatically higher, their words, uh, than the overall rate for the industry. And in 2011, the Department of Transportation actually fined Spirit Airlines for alleged deceptive advertising practices. Uh, the complaint that the U.S. Department of Transportation brought against them said the airline had been running an advertising campaign which promoted specific discounted fares but did not disclose full details regarding extra fees added on to the advertised rates. Um, and what Brian Choi says is that Spirit is an a la carte airline. Yeah, they sure are. But most people don't really understand all these extra fees that they're getting. I'll find the people who I talk to that like Spirit Airlines are the people who know what they're getting. They have no desire to bring any luggage on board. Um, they don't care where they sit. And they don't particularly care whether they get someplace on time. So if that's you, and you don't care where you sit, <laughs> you don't want to bring on any luggage, and you don't care if you're on time, and you want something really cheap, 
Spirit Airlines, they are your airlines. Uh, Dorit says, and you get fist fights too. That's fantastic. Um, Brian Choi says, uh, Spirit bag fees varies on where you pay. Cheaper online, expensive at the gate. Yeah, that's one of their models. They're like, you need to pay for that up front. Uh, Noopshi says, uh, Spirit uh, sucks so bad. It's a latch dis last ditch airline total bait and switch. Uh, and Jason says, the only thing you can bring on board with Spirit Airlines is a small backpack without a fee. Yeah, and it like has to be a really small backpack. Um, Noopshi says, fly Spirit and become a Spirit. Um, that's right. Uh, and uh, Kirk uh, is speaking of a different airline, Wow Airlines. They're based in Iceland uh, and said they were horrible to Paris. Kirk, I'm curious, why was... Um, Wow, airline's horrible to Paris. Noopshi says Spirit is the old air tran. Steve, right here, gave a great um, endorsement of Spirit Airlines. Says, I took it once, never again. Uh, and Nelson says, yeah, I think he loves Spirit because of the yellow shirt. That is the only reason that I love Spirit. Uh, and Kirk says, what up, my ninja? What up, Kirk? Um, Deshaun says, uh, Spirit sucks. But it'll get you where you to go if you need to go cheap. Yeah, that's right. So uh, speaking of discount carriers, uh, there's another one from Norway called Norwegian. And this guy said I got delayed 12 hours and only got a $17 food voucher. Wow, that sucks. Tanner really doesn't like Spirit Air. It says it's the ultimate joke of the airlines worldwide. Um, and uh, all right. So uh, let's go back to this page. Um... Da, 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 da. Uh, here's Barbara Johnny says spirit brings your spirit down I think you could Daniel says have you ever flown Ryanair I never have and you know what I've never flown spirit either uh, because I actually value my time and I actually like to get places on time uh, so yeah Alex says uh, spirit gives you free bags if you're military that's nice of them um, but they probably still won't won't make me fly them. All right, so let's go on to the last airline. The last airline. This is the 10th best airline in the U.S. It's the worst airline on this list. It's the worst airline that Skytrax rated. Um, any other airlines, I guess Skytrax considered too small to really rate. I mean, there's others like Sun Country and some of these things, but they were too small for this list. Uh, and so this is Frontier Airlines. A number of you guessed this right. So thumbs up to all of you that guessed this. Frontier Airlines. They are an ultra low cost carrier headquartered in Denver, Colorado. Frontier Airlines flies around the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. If you've ever seen a flight in the USA for 15 or $20, is probably from Frontier Airlines. Frontier Airlines has 84 planes. They fly to 100 destinations. And when I looked at their number of daily flights, it, it was actually really hard to find because they don't publish much information. I found something that said 300 in daily flights, but that it seems really low. Um, so I kind of questioned that number. But uh, if you want to bring a full-size carry-on on Frontier, it's $30 if purchased during initial booking. If you buy it during online check-in, so mind you, when you book your flight, you can decide to check some, like, to carry it on. If you pay for it when you're booking your ticket, it's $30. If you pay for your carry-on when you do online check-in, it's $40. If you pay for your carry-on when you're at the airport, it's $45. I mean, that's, that goes up. Uh, are you thirsty on the plane? You want a soda? That'll be $3. Um, Frontier Airlines, there's no recline on the seats. Uh, and... There was a study by Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and Wichita State University that they conducted in 2015. And uh, they said it was one of the worst airlines in the United States, especially due to its rate of customer complaints and bumped passengers. Uh, they also went on to say the airline also had relatively poor on-time performance and the waiting time for help when calling the airline on the phone was reported to have risen to two hours or more. Wow, that is a really long time. Uh, and San Diego, um, Frontier flies a lot of flights to Las Vegas. And I've talked to people that have flown Frontier when they're telling me they're flying Frontier. I'm like, you are brave. Let me know what you think. And everybody that I've talked to that's flown Frontier from San Diego to Las Vegas says they will never fly Frontier again. Um... 
And uh, Peacebeck says, just remember, you get what you pay for. Yes, that is true. You do get what you pay for. Um, Daniel says, Frontier is so slow, the windows are pictures of the sky, and they drive you to your destination. That's awesome. Steve uh, says, Frontier is one I've never fly, never heard anything good. Uh, <laughs> Take care of you says is lies. Lies. Total lies. That spirit is way worse than Frontier. I'm curious... Uh, take care of you. Why is spirit way worse than Frontier? Um, and uh, Tom says he took Frontier once from Denver to Brighamham, Birmingham, uh, and it was very cramped. Um, <laughs> uh, Noopshi says uh, worst equals Frontier. Screw the rear tail graphics. Uh, Alex says their seats feel like they are made from plastic. Um, yeah, <laughs> Hunter says, I would rather walk than fly Frontier. Connor says, he had to wait three and a half hours on the phone with Frontier. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely crazy. Um, John Allen says, Amtrak is worse than all of these combined. I, yeah, I mean, we could totally have a whole video about Amtrak and why train service in the U.S. is lame. There's probably a future live stream I should do <laughs> because Amtrak is pretty lousy. Connor says, uh, Frontier seats hurt my back. Um, yeah, they're probably not that comfortable. Um, a pop music says, if you book through Alaska and Frontier is the carrier, all fees are waived. That's an interesting tip. Uh, so thank you for the tip, pop music. Um, music, uh, Sly F1 says, I've found domestic fares on Frontier for one penny from Trenton to Nashville. Wow, that's cheap. They got to be making that up someplace else. James says, and no Wi-Fi on Frontier. It's a bad airline. But Deshaun, he gives a good data point and says, I've flown Frontier a few times and had no problems. I bring a water bottle, small snacks, and a sandwich, and I'm fine. I buy two seats to be more comfortable. Well, that's a way to do it. Buy two seats. Uh, and Landy says, United sucks, but at least now they give you pretzels. They do give you pretzels, and United gives you stroop waffles for breakfast. Uh, and uh, John Allen says, Alaska is the best. Um, all right, well, so I always give out, always give out a t-shirt in these videos, and it's always about something that, um, something that I've said in this video, in whatever video I'm talking about. So if you want to win a t-shirt, um, I'm going to ask the first airline that I talked about, which was Delta Airlines. Uh, I mentioned where Delta Airlines is on the Skytrax Top 100 list, right? All these airlines I've been telling you in the Top 100, where they fell. And so the question is, um, Delta Airlines on the Skytrax ranking, where did it rank on this list of the Top 100 in last year's Skytrax ranking? So this is the 2018 Skytrax ranking. What number was Delta Airlines in the top 100? The first person to answer that question correctly wins a Yellow Productions t-shirt shipped directly to them. And Shinmei Joshi wins with number 37. Very good. Uh, though there's actually a number of you who said 37, but Shinmei is the winner. Winner, winner, winner. All right, Shinmei. So you can let me know what size shirt you want. Let me know on Facebook or send me an email at chris at yellow.net uh, with two W's. Uh, and to everybody else who gave the correct answers, and there were many of you, um, you're too slow. You got to come in sooner next time. Uh, a couple of things uh, I'll say just if you're here and you're regularly watching. This past weekend, I was in downtown Los Angeles. I was shooting a fun live stream with this guy by the name of Brigham Yen. He has this blog called uh, Downtown LA Rising. Uh, I've never met anybody who loves downtown LA more than Brigham. So stay tuned for that this Friday. Uh, this Friday, you'll see that. We take a walk through downtown LA and check out all the new developments in downtown LA. Uh, and so that was a lot of fun. This next weekend, I'm doing a collaboration in Venice Beach. Uh, and so you can look for a new Venice Beach video coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, and everybody always asks when the next live stream is. The next live stream is going to be, I have it written down on here, 
next week, next Monday. Always, not always, but mostly do these Mondays at 8 p.m. So the next live stream will be next week, Monday, March 18th, 2019 at 8 p.m. Los Angeles time. Um, and uh, so definitely tune in next week. Uh, Vic Lau said, was the name of that person Brigham Young? No, it's Brigham Yen, Y-E-N, not Brigham Young. Uh, and Barbara said, I didn't see the entire video. The video stopped when you were mentioning the video was buffering. Hope I can try viewing again later. Hopefully you can, Barbara, if for some reason the live stream doesn't upload correctly. I've got it all recorded, and so I could upload the recorded one after the fact, too. Uh, and Daniel asked when's the next live stream, and so I just answered that, but probably because there's a little bit of delay. So again, tune in next week on Monday for the next live stream. By the way, if any of you have ideas for things you'd like to see in the next live stream, let me know. I always love your ideas on things to do, because um, I haven't written the one for next Monday yet. And if you want to know what that topic is, I always post the topics um, in the YouTube community area, which if you go to my channel, you can click on the community tab, and you'll see the posts also. If you follow me on Facebook, I always post the topics there as well, typically about two to three days out. Uh, and sometimes the streams on Facebook work, sometimes they don't. Today it didn't work, and for people who said I saw the buffering problems, um, some of it was on my side because I was streaming both to YouTube and Facebook, and I did this at 1080p, and I think the higher resolution just, I don't know, overwhelmed everything. Oh, and by the way, this is there's a new thing in the background right here. It's the, oh, this is, this is hard. Right here, that's the 100K silver play button. If you saw my video about getting to that 100,000 subscribers, that was the one YouTube sent to me right there. So that has its new place on the wall back there. All right, well, I won't say goodbye to all of you, but I will thank you all for being part of the live stream or making it this far in the archive. And I will see you all in the next video, next recorded video this Friday, downtown Los Angeles, next live stream, next Monday, 8 p.m. Uh, all right.